Okay. So, so yeah, today, uh, basically, me and Akash, we're going to be talking to you guys about Bitcoin's price action. Remember that you guys want to also not only subscribe to the to this YouTube channel to kind of like follow the technical analysis and on-chain analysis that we have been putting out. Make sure to also follow us on Twitter. Uh, you guys can find me at Ali underscore charts. Uh, I'm, I'm basically putting out mostly on-chain analysis, uh, the way you kind of like see the markets and, you know, different price levels that could be telling you where different assets are heading next. The same thing with Akash, which you guys, I don't know, Akash, you want to talk about your social media? Yeah, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Mangeko, uh, which is Mangeko with a zero in the end. Uh, I put out basically a lot of uh, technical analysis, uh, not a lot of on-chain though, uh, just random charts that I find interesting and the trades that I take and like my outlook on the market. Indeed, indeed. So, so yeah, after you guys follow us on Twitter or subscribe to this channel, now we can dive into kind of like the, the technicals and the on-chain metrics that are going on around Bitcoin, right? Uh, for Bitcoin specifically, the, the way I have been looking at it uh, is that it was kind of like, I mean, trading uh, upwards in this uh, parallel channel, right? Uh, this parallel channel seems to have been broken on December, on August 25th on August 26, 26, sorry, right? But then kind of, uh, yeah, Bitcoin came up, right? Kind of like retested that uh, lower boundary of this, uh, of this channel. And now it has been retracing again, right? Uh, the main price levels that I'm looking at now at, right? To determine with, where this asset is going next is basically the 46,000 uh, support level, as well as the 50,000, 50,500 resistance level, right? So any uh, daily candlestick close above uh, this resistance level or below this support level will determine where Bitcoin is heading next. Uh, whenever we look at the at the on-chain metrics, uh, it does tell us that, that Bitcoin faces a lot of uh, resistance above it. Right, uh, it's a significant number of, of addresses, but uh, a big amount of tokens, right? Between $47,300 and basically $50,100, right? So, from an ancient perspective, the only way I can see Bitcoin resuming the uptrend is if it's able to reclaim this uh, supply bearer as support, right? Which could lead to a potential upswing towards $54,000. But as long as it continues to trade below this uh, supply barrier, right? And it continues to, you know, uh, kind of like dive lower. I believe that there is potential for these addresses to be encouraged to sell uh, just to prevent their, their investments from, from going, you know, into the reds, right? So a potential sell-off from these uh, big number of addresses that are holding Bitcoin uh, in the price range between $47,000 and $50,000, I, be I believe that could lead to a, a potential, you know, downswing towards maybe like $40,000 or $36,000, right? Um, I'm, the, the way I'm also looking at the uh, other on-chain metrics, right? I mean, we have described many of these on-chain metrics on a weekly basis, but it, something that has caught my attention recently is that basically the, the number of addresses on the network with 100 to 10,000 coins have been accumulating again. So, you know, since August uh, 24th, these, uh, these number of addresses have basically increased their positions, right? They were holding around 9.60 million uh, Bitcoin uh, in, on August 24th. And uh, now they're basically holding 9.2 million Bitcoin, uh, which you know it, it could it could eventually translate into prices, right? Especially if these uh, you know buying pressure co continues rising, we could potentially see uh, uh, you know a break of that resistance level out there, right? But <clears throat> ideally, you want to wait where a daily candlestick close above basically $50,000, I mean, from an ancient perspective, before you, you enter your, your long position, right? Uh, something that it is like, you don't wanna see this uh, per se, right? Doing a doing an uptrend is uh, or is kind of like the, the active addresses, right? Uh, when we look at the active addresses on the network, I mean, kind of like the activity on the network, it does seem like it has decreased a lot ever since the peak 
of uh, of sixty five thousand dollars in in mid April, and since then it just continues going down, right? I mean, uh, you definitely don't want to see that because that is a, a clear indication that the the amount of interest on Bitcoin is kind of like going down. So you know, when, whenever you have uh, the lower interest on on this asset class. Uh, so those uh, prices, right? I mean, the prices start to, to go down, right? Alongside the number of, of active addresses, right? Whenever you look at the new addresses joining the network, you will see that, that the interest is also coming down, right? I mean, there was kind of like a bearish divergence between prices and, and there are new addresses joining the network as Bitcoin approached the, the top, right? And since then, it continues making a, a series of lower lows uh, as it shows that not that many addresses are, are, are you know are, are getting back to their positions right uh what that shows you is that you know as as interest winds down prices could also continue to go down right so from an ancient perspective especially when looking at the number of new addresses joining the network on a daily basis right what you want to see is that this kind of like makes a higher high right it rises above basically 40 four hundred thousand addresses joining the the, the network per day. And if it rises above that metric, then we could potentially have a higher high right here, which could eventually lead to, to higher prices. But as it continues trending downward, I believe that prices will continue trending downwards as well, right? But to be 100% certain that I'm not gonna, you know, be faked out or anything like that, right? By, by the market makers, I will just wait for a decisive close below the $46,000 a level, which coincides with the 200 day moving average, right? I mean, that for me will be a major signal that we could, potenti could potentially dive towards the 50, the moving average that currently sits around yeah forty two thousand dollars, or even towards uh, you know the setup trend line by the TV sequential indicator, which currently sits around thirty seven thousand dollars to be specific. But if you know we, I mean, as we approach the, the end of the month, just in a few hours, we could see a lot of volatility, right? And if Bitcoin manages to close about fifty thousand dollars, then the next price target would be first fifty-four thousand dollars, and then fifty-eight thousand uh, dollars. That's basically my take on Bitcoin from a you know long-term perspective as well as from an ancient perspective. Maybe you, Akash, are looking at, at something different from a from a lower time frame. Yeah, I think I pretty much agree with what you're saying, but I kind of doubt forty uh, K is possible. Uh, but also the on-chain metrics are kind of uh, messing with my view. All right, so let me just start on a four-hour time frame and what I think is happening right now is I kind of changed uh, this uh, structuring a little bit uh, because the Bitcoin kind of broke out uh, about, uh, below the uh, trend line that was drawn connecting these swing highs on 5th August uh, and uh, 18th, 19th August, and then this swing high, right? Since Bitcoin broke below this, uh, I've redrawn the parallel channel uh, and now it fits perfectly. Uh, so another thing that I want to bring your attention to is this particular trend line. Every time Bitcoin is, uh, is trying to breach above this, uh, that was here on uh, 28th August, where it kind of grazed, uh, grazed it 50K. It didn't do it, didn't manage to retest it. And then here on 29th August, it uh, breached uh, about the 50K level, but then it uh, failed to hold above it. And now we've dropped down below it. And as you can see, uh, as the consolidation increased, uh, Bitcoin kind of got rejected by it and then a sudden sell off uh, took place over here on 30th August yesterday. Uh, it's led to a 3.43% downswing. And now uh, we're bouncing off of this lower trend line here. I believe like uh, a volatile move is on its way, just around the corner, but uh, I'm not sure. Like I am partially leaning bullish uh, because of. The, the three tap setup or like the triple bottom thing that I'm seeing here, right? So this is the first bottom, second bottom, and the third bottom. Uh, this is uh, this has been happening uh, repeatedly uh, with Bitcoin price action, like one, two, and three, and then we see a massive uh, price up, price up spring, right? Similarly here, one, two, and then three, and then we finally go higher, right? Uh, also, you saw a similar thing happen uh, on a higher time frame with this consolidation up here. One, two, three, and then we moved higher, right? So I'm kind of uh, on the short term, I'm, I'm leaning bullish, but my uh, market maker uh, 
like since I'm paranoid about how market makers kind of uh, mess up your uh, trades, right? I feel like uh, there is another leg down that probably retests the 46k level before it actually goes higher. But anything below, uh, hey, hold up, my bad. Uh, I meant the 45,800 level before we go higher. Uh, but yeah, so I'm leaning uh, bullish. It could either go now, uh, break this, and then hit the 49k, retest the 50k, could fail or it could go higher. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm going to be completely bullish if we close above the 51,000, approximately $600 level. But if that's the case, then we're going to reach uh, 56,766 or like approximately 55,000 level. Let me just remove this. Right. But if we fail to go above this and we fail to hold above the 45,800 level, I think uh, it's pretty sure that we're going to come down here uh, to the 44,000 level. Uh, we, we got a healthy support happening over here uh, and you can expect a move up from here. Right, so it's kind of, uh, I'm, if, if I were to sum it up, I am a little on the fence right now, uh, undecided on my directional bias for the day. Um, but like Ali mentioned, right, on uh, on a higher time frame, the global uh, in and out of the money shows that we're currently losing uh, this uh, price zone as uh, Bitcoin price uh, goes lower. Uh, this is going to turn into a resistance level. And as you can see, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of uh, support present over here. We could head down to 40K. So this is really confusing for me. I am currently staying out of it as long as Bitcoin uh, consolidates here. Or it, it gives me a clear bias, which is uh, about 50K, 51K level. Anything you want to add? Yeah, I, yeah I, I actually like the, the way you have drawn that that parallel channel in there, especially on the, on the lower time frame, right? Because yeah. um, the, kind of the, the price action that we're seeing right now, uh, it's pretty similar to the last time Bitcoin touched that that lower boundary of the of the channel, right? Where you had you know a major bullish impulse, right? Then you have basically Bitcoin no kind of like lose uh, all of the gains, right? No, I'm, mm. I'm talking about uh, as it approach the the lower yeah as it approach the the lower boundary of the channel, right? Uh, you see that. Bitcoin kind of like taps the 44,000 support level, then rises, right? Mm -hmm. um, then goes back down, right? And then it goes up, correct? Yeah. And, and now, right now, you're kind of like seeing the, the same type of price action, right? Bitcoin goes down yeah. to 46,700, right? Goes up, and then uh, gets rejected. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's very, it's very similar. So, so yeah, we'll, we'll have to, again, we'll have to like wait for, for, for that uh, support level. Of, I mean, the way you have it done is between 46,750, I believe, but I believe it's around $46,000 because that coincides with the, with the 200 day moving average, right? So any yeah. close below the 200 day moving average for me will be a reason to not, maybe not too short, but definitely to look for a, for a long, uh, too long, you know, at, at lower price levels, right? Um, but any any rebound from this zone, especially as as we approach the end of the month, uh, mm -hmm. could be just a just a mimic by the but the market makers before the next actual price action, right? So uh, once again, we were seeing a lot of volatility today. Uh, it began yesterday, right? Uh, and and now I believe that it could the the this high volatility period. Will we could potentially finish by tomorrow with a major price movement. So right now, I believe that for Bitcoin, it's just a matter of waiting and seeing, right? Whether it's able to break above, above resistance, right? As the IO map shows a lot of resistance between 47,000 and $50,000, right? If Bitcoin is able to overcome that, 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 that major supply barrier right there, then it could potentially rise towards uh, $54,000 or even $57,000, right? But if, if, if instead it breaks below the, the underlying support level that basically sits uh, between 47,000, I mean, 46,750 and $46,000, then we could potentially see a downswing towards $44,000, $42,000, or even $40,000, right? So um, as of right now, uh, the way we see Bitcoin is just a matter of waiting and seeing for a potential break of either support or resistance. Perfect. Yeah, 